All right. The first chapter in the book is like an introduction for the things that we'll talk about throughout the course. Uh, it does start off with three learning goals for this chapter. Identify the five areas in which children's lives need to be improved and explain the roles of resiliency and social policy. Discuss the most important processes, periods, and issues in developmental psychology, children's psych, and summarize uh, why research is important in child development and the main theories, child development, research methods, designs, and challenges. All right. Before we get into that, the text starts off with a couple of like anecdotes about Ted Kaczynski and Alex Walker. And what they're trying to do here is show that the people develop wildly differently because of the different things that go into their development, the context, the time period, their culture, their ethnicity, all these different things. So Kaczynski, he was a genius. He was a, turned into a college professor, he, but he was troubled and he couldn't get along with other people and he ends up becoming the Unabomber. And so he would send packages to people and they were, they were bombs. They would blow up and they kill, he killed people, several people. Um, this went on for years. There's an article in the module about Ted Kaczynski. If you'd like to look a little bit more into that, I think you should. It'll help you with the discussions. Alice Walker, on the other hand, she had a very difficult life. She grew up very poor in the 40s in Alabama. She's black. There's a lot of racism there. When she's young, eight years old, her brother accidentally shoots her eye out. And so she had all these different things that she needed to overcome in her life. And she becomes a Pulitzer Prize winning author. So the point of all this, again... So many different things that go into making a person who they are. The time period, the culture, the genes, the family, the friends. There's so many factors in developmental psychology that factor into um, how you become who you are. All right. So on the first part here, caring for children. To better care for children, we need to examine children's development, the areas in which children's lives need to be improved, and the roles of resiliency and social policy. When we're talking about development, this is the pattern or movement of change that begins at conception and continues throughout the entire lifespan. You develop your entire lifespan. Some people used to kind of consider developmental psychology something just for kids and adolescents, but you do it, you continue all the way through your entire lifespan. It's not just growth. Developmental psychology is not just growth. It is also the decline. And so this is child psychology, though, so we probably won't get it too much into that. But if you take developmental psychology, if you take um, aging psychology, you'll get into that decline. On improving the lives of children, there are some topics that are of what they call contemporary concern. Health and well-being is one. Examples, should you drink while you're pregnant? Does diet affect development? Do kids exercise enough nowadays? And so these are the type of things that they're talking about with health and well-being. With parenting and education, is daycare bad? Is spanking bad? Is divorce bad? So those are all things, that, like examples of things you can think about. I can tell you personally, right off the bat, parenting is hard. And it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of work if you want to do it well. Uh, it takes a lot of research to understand the things that can help you to be a better parent. On education, we'll talk about several things throughout the course on education and child development. The social cultural context. So context, where basically where you are in your like time period, in the context, in your culture, these different things. Like you're going to develop differently if you were born in 1900 compared to 2000, obviously. So yes, context, there are numerous contexts. Culture, uh, this sort of behavior, patterns, and beliefs, and other products of the people that are passed on from generation to generation. That's one way of wording culture. They talk a little bit about ethnicity here. So the characteristics based on your like cultural heritage, nationality, characteristics, race, religion, things of this nature. SES is definitely involved in child development. This is a person's position within the society based on their income, their occupation, their education, and then gender also as well. Uh, the characteristics of people as either male or female. On resiliency and social policy, resiliency, the way that this textbook, this textbook describes it, is exemplified by children who develop confidence in their abilities despite serious obstacles. And so those can include negative stereotypes about maybe their ethnicity, maybe about their gender, um, maybe about SES. And a number of individual factors can influence resiliency. They're listed here. Uh, good self-control, good intellectual functioning. We'll talk about some of these things later on, like self-control. Super important for development if you wanted to um, be successful in life. A close relationship to a good parent figure and uh, bonds to a caring adult outside the family, maybe like a teacher. 
authoritative, it's not listed here, but authoritative parenting too is, uh, it's turning out to be pretty important in development. Related to this, you want your kids to be resilient, like anti-fragile. Uh, you don't want you don't want to necessarily put your kids through the ringer unnecessarily, but you do want them to face obstacles in order to grow. You don't want them to fold at the first sign of adversity. And so related to resiliency is the social policy. Okay, you can look at figure two also for a little bit on the characteristics of resilient children, some of the things we just talked about there. The social policy, so this is government's course of action designed to promote the welfare of their citizens. And children who grow up in poverty, which is 18% of U.S. kids that live in poverty, which that's getting better, but we still do more. Since there's such a large number in poverty, it's something that we need to think about. And we need to think about strategies for improving the lives of children, including improving social policy for families. When families fail, fail or are seriously like in danger of child's well-being, then governments have to step in. You've probably heard about situations like this before. Developmental psychologists and other researchers try to find ways, like do research in order to help families to improve their children's well-being. And it's another example here. So figure three talks about exposure to six stressors among poor and middle-aged children compared to uh, the poor children compared to middle-income children. And you can see here, so we have family turmoil, separation from the parents, exposure to violence. And you can see for the poor children, this is so much higher than it is for middle income children. And so that is going to have a serious effect on uh, child development. And for a lot of people, it's possibly going to be a negative effect there. I mean, exposure to violence, 70, almost 75% for poor children. It's actually super high, even for middle income children. And so throughout the course, we will talk about some things like this and how social policy can, uh, in research, can help to uh, try to negate some of these effects. All right, so that's the first set of slides. On the next set of slides, we'll get into the developmental processes, the periods, and the issues with developmental psychology.